Yes, we got a lot of good news about Star Wars Outlaws, and you are probably already aware of some of the bad news as well, right? Well, we got updates from Ubisoft, I'll share my take on everything, just a ton to go over. Starting with the Wanted system that caused the Empire to chase you, we already saw that in action in the gameplay walkthrough, and now we got some new info on it. As more Imperial troops will join the hunt for you as your Wanted level goes up, with the maximum level summoning elite enemies to hunt you down. Could only be the Death Troopers that we saw briefly in the story trailer, and even when you try to escape the space, you won't be safe because then TIE Fighters will try to destroy you. So just like with any wanted system, you can try and hide to get rid of the Empire, with the higher the wanted level, the longer it will take for them to drop the search. But we now also learned that you can meet corrupt Imperial officers, who you can bribe to remove your wanted status, which really sounds a lot like the Manadi we saw in Assassin's Creed Mirage. You could also bribe them to remove all your notoriety in one go, or of course take out the mercenary that would come to hunt you, which would also remove your full wanted level. And Outlaws seems to have something like this as well, as they note that you can participate in a challenging in-world event at the maximum wanted level to get the Empire off your back. And I would not be surprised if this involved taking out an ATST that was already teased, but that is just my speculation. So good to know that the Empire is just linked to the wanted system and is separate from the four syndicates that we will interact with and these play a bigger role and it is also where the reputation system comes in that lets you unlock some really impactful things. We got the Crimson Dawn, who you might know from the Han Solo movie, the Pi Cartel and the Hut Cartel that we of course saw a lot of recently in the Boba Fett TV show, and a brand new syndicate called the Ashiga Clan that Ubisoft specifically made for this game. And by doing jobs for these factions, probably main and side missions, and also making choices in favor of that syndicate, you can increase the reputation with the lowest being terrible, all the way up to excellent. And a good relationship will help you in many ways. It gives you access to brand new jobs, you will hear new rumors that can lead to new activities in the open world, factions can grant you access to locations that you otherwise have to break into, and if you have like a good reputation with a syndicate, you will also get access to the forts they all have within cities that can also open up special opportunities. Each faction also has a special vendor and a good reputation will get you discounts and access to new items, maybe brand new outfits, as we know there are different looks available for K. I really love the Sabak shark outfit with the small cape, but we've seen some other nice jackets as well. Like I totally think we can get some syndicate specific equipment from these special fenders by raising our reputation. And we'll of course share tips on how to get the best gear in the game and we'll keep you up to date on all the news, so subscribe if you haven't already and leaving a like on the video if you like it so far would really help me out. And I love this benefit, if you get into trouble with another syndicate and find yourself in a chase, a syndicate with whom you have a good relationship might jump in and help you get away. So handy to try and be as friendly with everyone as possible, although you will have to make choices that could positively impact one syndicate but have a negative impact on another. Throughout the main story there will always be choices like this, so between a couple of different factions, but you can then always do side contracts afterwards to raise the reputation back up again. And being sneaky will actually be very very rewarding for your reputation as well, because when you get spotted infiltrating a syndicate hideout without their permission, that will actually cause you to lose reputation with that gang. And you don't want to use your blaster in stealth, because that will like create some unwanted attention, and so it's all about tagging enemies with Kaser binoculars, and then taking them out with a stealth takedown. We now also learned that you can use your hairpin to lockpick doors with a rhythm based mini game to get access to new areas, and you can also use your companion Nick to reach new locations as well and we of course saw that you can also use him to attack enemies or distract them which will also help you for a stealthy approach. Now very interesting is that each faction will also have a vault at the center of their territory that should contain precious materials or precious objects but even with a good reputation you can only access that vault by breaking in and then stealing the content which will probably also require you to be stealthy to avoid losing reputation. And I'm immediately thinking, can we already get access to these faults early on in the game if we know how to break in? Like, that would mean that we can get some pretty nice materials early on. I will of course be trying this. Or maybe infiltrating these requires the grapple hook that we now saw in action for the first time, which might be a main story unlock. Now, but with there basically being four syndicates that you can help and fight against, plus the Empire, and we also saw K fight wildlife as well briefly, 
It means that we have a lot of enemy variety in this game, which is really good news, as it's usually a weakness in Ubisoft titles. Like think of the Far Cry games, and most recently Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, that only had one humanoid faction for us to fight. So a big plus that Star Wars Outlaws will have more variety, with each syndicate of course using their own unique weapons that we can pick up or have Nyx grab for us, and then use against our enemies until the ammo runs out, after which you will throw the weapon away. You also have quick modifications for your blaster, with some mods giving you advantages against the certain enemy types like droids so that should also create some strategies for when fighting the many different enemies and you will by the way never entirely cut off any faction even if you constantly take them out or screw them over you can always rebuild trust and gain reputation again although if you have a bad reputation with one of the groups they will send assassins after you which sounds pretty awesome. But yeah, we have to touch on the bad news as well, and there are multiple layers to this. With the August 30th release date, Ubisoft also opened up the pre-orders for the game's three editions. You got a standard one for $70, a gold edition for $110, and an ultimate edition for $130. Now these are the same prices as we saw for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and I'm sure Assassin's Creed Red's prices will be the same, but there's a bit more going on here. The first problem is that the these editions are not really deals, like $40 more for the gold edition with the season pass does not make a lot of sense because you could buy the season pass separately for $40 as well. Like usually you get a discount when buying the gold edition, also the ultimate pack, $20 more for two cosmetic bundles that are probably $10 each. Although this is where the 3 days early access comes in, which is included in both versions, so that's basically the benefit, although only when you pre-order those editions. But it of course overall really sucks that you have to pay $40 extra if you just want to play 3 days early and don't really care for the DLCs. Then there's also the exclusive day 1 Jabba's Gambit mission as part of the season pass, which sucks because you of course don't want to miss out on content if you pay for the regular version of the game. Like Ubisoft has been doing these for 5 plus years, like every season pass usually has some sort of day 1 mission that is like 30 to 45 minutes long and completely optional. And Ubisoft now confirmed that that is the case for Star Wars Outlaws as well. Like Jabba will play a huge role in the main story of the game as the leader of the Hut Cartel. So you will interact with him many times throughout the base game. And this season pass exclusive mission is just an extra optional quest for him. Still I wonder if this is worth all the bad PR. Like the story trailer is now at 37,000 likes versus 152 dislikes which a ton for a trailer that is viewed 2.1 million times. Again, it's nothing new for the Ubisoft games, but when compared to say Jedi Survivor that just had two editions without any content locked behind any of them, this is kind of a bad look. But yeah, having covered these games extensively for almost 7 years now, I do know that these exclusive missions don't really matter in the end, like that has never been the case. And with every planet being the size of multiple Assassin's Creed Odyssey zones, I do not fear that there will be a lack of content with the regular edition of the game. I really like the part of the story trailer where we saw the speeder used to traverse the water in a pretty big open space. And you can by the way summon this mount with one press of the button and Game Informer who already got to play the game says that it feels smooth, quick and agile like a speeder shoot. And while on the bike you can hear radio chatter about new activities you can pursue if you want or you can go to the cantina which functions as a central spot of each city where you can also gather intel and find new contracts. But you will also meet characters with side missions on the street and there should be many things in the open world that can attract your attention like there will be empire checkpoints that will try and stop you if you run through them there will be shipjackers or pirates on the road that will try and rob you. If it gets close to what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2, that would be pretty cool. Factions will be fighting the Empire or themselves and you can choose to engage or not. And they are overall focused on a more dense experience instead of having a lot of empty spaces. And this should also apply to exploring the orbit around each planet. Like they did not want to make endless space, so instead we have to travel from orbit to orbit around one planet. Kind of similar to Starfield, 
but now we should find different things to do in each orbit as well. And if you are planning to pre-order the game on PC, they can now enter my code JawRaptor at checkout and then I get a small compensation from that. Like, it's up to you if you want to pre-order, of course, but when you want to, using this code would help me out. So thanks for that. I'm leaving a link to the PC page in the video description. Of course, subscribe for way more videos on the game. A like would really help me out. And check out our previous Outlaws video by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you very soon. Goodbye.